What's going on everyone? Brian here from Native Instruments. I'm here today to go over two really unique instruments, Lores and Fables, which are currently available at a huge discounted price during the holiday season. Using similar layouts, both of these instruments are fantastic for creating evolving cinematic textures and soundscapes using 16 different instruments and over 400 different articulations. Unique with Fables, you can also play the instrument in new ways using polyphonic aftertouch. In this tutorial, I'll be basically adding a handful of additional elements using Lores and Fables to a project that I started sketching out. Before we jump into it, make sure you like and subscribe down below so you get notified about all of the amazing deals going on during the holiday season. Now, without further ado, let's jump into it and talk about Lores and Fables. I have a rough sketch of a project here, and I'm going to be using lores and fables to add some additional elements. I'll be going over some of the unique features to show you how powerful these instruments can be. Let's first take a listen to what I have so far. Let's first start with lores and talk about how do you find different sounds to use. One of the main ways to find a preset to use is by using the preset navigation area. So I'm gonna click on darkness here and this brings up all of the main presets for lores. Now basically working from left to right here, I'm currently selected on all presets. So this shows me everything that lores has to offer. Now there's also additional subcategories here like classical, hybrid, air, and tails. Any of the presets that I select here, we're gonna be able to hear an audio preview so you can hear what the preset sounds like without actually having to load it. So let's just select a couple and take a listen. Now, if you ever need to adjust the audio preview of the preset, you can just use this slider here. Now, just above it, this info section tells you a little bit about what instruments and layers are included in this preset. So I have the preset name, Hopeful Sunrise. There are three different instruments included. So there's the voice, the horse fiddle, and the Comanche. And next to it are the different layers that are being played using these particular instruments. So if I want to load this preset, I can just double click on it and now it's loaded into lores. So let's just hear how this sounds all together. So the way that lores and fables work are you have three main sound stages. You have sound stage one, two, and three. And in each sound stage, there are three different instruments loaded. So we have the voice, the horse fiddle, and the Comanche. Now we'll get into the more advanced layers a little bit later, but if you click on any of these images here, you have different layering options. So each sound stage can have up to three different layers. They could be vocal phrases or 
different articulations of a particular instrument. You can basically have nine different sounds all being played simultaneously. Now down below here, you have different layer controls, so you can adjust the volume per layer, you can adjust things like pitch and attack. The mapping section is, you know, what range of the keyboard is actually gonna be triggering it, how is the sound gonna be triggered via expression or velocity, and you can also add motion to a particular layer. So I'm just gonna click here and just kind of hide that for right now. So again, let's listen to this preset with all three sound stages active. So we hear the voice and as I continue to hold down the note, we also hear the horse fiddle and the Comanche. Now for the beginning of this track, all I wanna really use is just the vocal phrase. So I'm gonna deactivate sound stage two and three and all we're left with is the vocal phrase. So let's record this into the beginning part of this track. So we'll quantize this. And what I'll also do is I wanna copy this over to the ending part of this track. And there we go. Now I really like the melody from the vocal phrase that we just recorded. And what I wanna do is actually re-record that melody but using the Stradivari cello. Now let's talk about accessing the more advanced functions like adding new layers and adding on a few more sound stages. So to access the different layering options inside of Lores and also Fables is by clicking this icon down here. So this brings up the different layers that I have access to. So right now we already have just one layer added and let's just swap this out for something different. So I can just click the magnifying glass and these are all the different layering options for the voice instrument. Right now we're selected on all, but you can also filter based on one shots, loop, design, or organic. So let's select the O and now if I trigger it, Now, when selected on a layer, the layer controls, these are just some basic layering option controls that you have, such as adjusting the volume. You can adjust pan settings. And you can also adjust the pitch or the attack and release time. So let's add in one additional layer here. So I'll click the slot just below it and we can select something else. We'll do phrases six. So let's just adjust the volume here. So you can still hear the kind of the sustained note from the first layer, and now we also hear the melodic line from this second layer that we added. So if I want to adjust the O, oh, let's turn down the volume a bit, turn this up. Perfect. Now in the mapping option, this is where you can kind of choose what range on the keyboard is going to be triggering a particular layer and also how that layer is gonna be triggered if it's engaged. So if we go back to the first layer here, the trim range, basically anything that's in the yellow key is gonna be triggering that phrase, but you can also adjust the range of it. So maybe only a couple notes are actually gonna be triggering it. This is helpful if you know you want to have, let's say, some sustained notes only in a couple keys down below. And if you start playing some higher notes on the piano, other phrases or sounds are going to be triggered. So I'm just going to leave this at zero, zero. So this is kind of the, the range that I'll be able to trigger this layer. And same thing with the layer just below. 
and the triggering via. Now this is where you can get pretty creative in kind of layering different sounds here. Now I like this O sound or this O layer and I want the phrase here to only be triggered, let's say based on velocity. So to engage the trigger via, we just turn this on and you can choose between expression or velocity. So we'll set this to velocity, increase this all the way to 127 and let's set this to 50. So the way that this works is if I lightly press the key on the keyboard, we're only gonna be hearing this layer here. But if I play the key a little bit harder, it's gonna then trigger the phrase or the layer just below. Then a little bit harder. Now, just to show you, if I select this to expression and close this, there's the expression slider here. And the way that this works is if I play the note on the keyboard, we're only gonna be hearing O, but then as I move the expression value up past 50, we're then gonna be hearing the additional layer. So I'm gonna go back and change this to velocity. There we go. Let's add one other instrument to this sound. So I'm gonna turn on Sound Stage 2 again, and currently we have the horse fiddle loaded. Now, if you wanna change what instrument is in this sound stage, I can just click the magnifying glass here. And these are all of the different instruments that I can select from, from clarinets, there's medieval pipes, the hurdy-gurdy, or cellos, violin, and trumpets. So I want to choose, let's say a cello, the voice, you know, it's a little bit higher, uh, higher up in the octave. So I want something that's maybe a little bit lower. Now with cello selected, you can also again filter by, you know, organic sounds designed or pre-mixed, but I'm just going to select all. And these are all of the different presets for the cello instrument. So let's just select one here. Now you can quickly cycle through the different presets for the cello by using the left and right arrow here. So let's record this into the project. Let's add this to kind of the middle section here. Let's jump over to Fables and cover some additional layering options. So I have Fables open and you know Fables and Lores are very similar. It's really just the types of instruments that you have access to. Um, so for example, if you click on the tune percussion here, instead of the clarinets, trumpets, and violins, we have things like low winds, pads, uh, water phone, also a cello and you know ambient guitar. But again, in terms of functionality and how all of the layers interact with each other, it's pretty much identical. So let's just go back to the preset browser here and just start with something. All right, so I like this one. Let's double click it. And so for this one, we have the female choir and you can actually solo each soundstage. So you kind of get an idea of the different elements. So this is the female choir, the male choir, and then pads. 
Now I wanna add some more motion to the pad sounds here. So what I'll do is click on this icon, Soundstage 3, and this again brings up the different layers, layering controls, mapping, but we also have motion, and inside of just Fables, you have this filter option. So let's turn off the filter and let's go to motion. So with motion, you have a few controls. You have the depth, which is how much of the LFO is being applied to the particular target, what the rate of the LFO is, whether it's tempo synced to your project or not. But this is where you choose, you know, what do you want the LFO to control? So it could be volume, pitch, or the pan. So first I just need to make sure that the motion is turned on. Let's just set this to 100% and to the volume. Now I'll solo this just so we can really hear what the motion effect does. So that's the volume, pitch. And then panning. Pretty cool. So let's just set this to volume. And now if you hear all three sounds together. So you can hear the longer that I hold down the note, we're gonna be hearing more of that LFO being applied. And you also have this filtering option here. You can turn on the filter and adjust the cutoff and the resonance and also choose if you want it to be a low pass, band pass, or a high pass. Now we can also, again, do this with the male choir as well. So if I click here, here's the motion. Let's activate it and make sure that the rate is the same. We'll dial back the depth of the LFO on the male choir just a little bit. And yeah, let's hear how this sounds together. So pretty unique sound. So let's just record this into the project. Now, one thing that I did that I haven't talked about yet is using the mod wheel. So the mod wheel in Lores and Fables, this is basically just controlling the volume for all three sound stages simultaneously. So what I did is I just recorded in some automation and kind of gradually brought in that sound. In Lores and Fables, you have a couple of effects options, and let's just talk about what those options are. So I have this preset from Fables Loaded called Epic Heights, and let's just take a listen to how this sounds without any of the effects processing. So we got this big sounding French horn, low brass and pad sounds. So some epic horns, definitely. Now down at the bottom here, you have four main effects controls. So you can add additional reverb to these sounds. The four main effects controls that you have in both lores and fables is reverb, noise, boost, and power. So with reverb, it basically just adds more reverb to the sounds that you have here. And these effects are being added to all three sound stages simultaneously. So this is without the reverb. Add some more reverb. Now the noise, it basically just adds more room noise. 
So pretty subtle, but you know, if I just have the noise knob turned on, we can hear it in the background. The boost knob boosts the lower frequencies and the higher frequencies as well. So again, without boost, and I'll start increasing it. So it actually just gives it a little bit more oomph and the power knob here adjusts the amount of parallel compression that's being applied. Now, an additional sound control that may not be super obvious right away is actually these icons here, the two rings, these are basically an XY pad. So if you click on one of the sound stages here, I can either pan the French horns to the left, to the right, and I can also increase or decrease the distance to the microphone. And this actually isn't doing any sort of effects processing, but actually cycling through different recordings. So it's gonna sound very realistic. So let's just listen to how the French horn sounds on its own. So this is up close. Let's add some distance. And then you can pan left or right. So maybe I want the French horns to be a little bit closer. The low brass here, let's increase the distance, maybe pan a little bit left. And for the pads, also increase the distance and pan a little bit right. So let's listen to how this sounds now. Perfect. Now, a very unique and relatively new feature inside of Fables is the ability to apply aftertouch. Now, aftertouch can be monophonic aftertouch, or if you're using something like the complete control. Now, the aftertouch can either be monophonic or it could actually be polyphonic aftertouch. You know, if you're using the Control S series, that keyboard supports polyphonic aftertouch. So if I click this icon here, this brings up the settings for Fables, and this icon is also available inside of Lores. Now in the settings and fables, you can adjust certain things like the velocity, um, you know, the key sensitivity, smart voicing, but the aftertouch function here, this aftertouch is basically per soundstage. So let's just enable this right now. And here are the three different sound stages: the French horn, low brass, and the pads. So with the French horns right now, by default, it's basically set to volume. So the harder that I press on the keys, it's gonna be increasing in volume. You can also do things like panning, pitch, you know, if I have the motion layer, uh, if I have the motion layer enabled, you can also increase the motion depth. So adding more LFO and a handful of other options. So let's set this to volume right now as it is and take a listen. So the way that polyphonic aftertouch works is I can hold down a single note, let's say in the left hand, and in the right hand, I'll just hold down another note, and the harder that I press, it's gonna be increasing in volume. So I can actually add a little bit of vibrato. Now, let's just change one of the layering options here. Let's go to low brass. I have motion, let's change it to the volume. And if we go back to settings here, there's low brass, we'll change this so the rate will increase over time. And we'll change this so that the rate will increase the harder that I press on the keys. Let's just solo it so we can hear what it sounds like. We'll adjust the rate a little bit. So again, I'm just holding down one note and the harder that I press on the key, the rate of this LFO is also increasing. So you can create some really cool sounds using the aftertouch, turning on motion, adding filter as well. So I'm just gonna turn off the motion rate here and let's just record in kind of some big brass for the ending part of this track. Yeah. 
Now, the last feature I want to talk about is the randomization. Now, I've definitely faced it quite often where, you know, I open up a new project and I have no idea where to start. So I start cycling through presets, just trying to find something that will inspire me. Now, inside of Lores and Fables, you have this dice icon here, which will basically randomly select a different preset in the instrument. So if I click the dice right now, it's just gonna select a different preset from Fables. So let's just hear what this one sounds like. Can choose a different one. So I really like this violin ensemble. So what I can actually do is click this lock icon and if I click the randomization button again, it's going to lock in soundstage one and then just randomly choose two different instruments for soundstage two and three. So now let's listen to this one. So cello sounds great. Let's lock this one in and randomize one more time. Perfect. So let's just lock this so that if I click randomize again, this is going to be locked in. So Again, this is a great tool if you're just looking for some inspiration, just trying to find some cool sounds, definitely use the randomize function. So we've added a few additional elements using Lords and Fables. So let's bring the track back to the beginning and just take a listen to kind of what we've added. <laughs> Hopefully this gives you some good info and some inspiration on how to use lores and fables. Make sure you go to nativeinstruments.com, check out all of the deals happening during the holiday season, especially the deals going on with lores and fables. Thanks for watching.